All right, so um, we know that during the Middle Ages, we, we had a, the feudal system in place where um, there were kings on the top who gave out lands to their lords, who hired knights to protect their land, and then the, the, the peasants, or actually serfs, were that bottom class. You know, it's, it's easy to call them peasants, but the, the large majority of these people were, were actually serfs. Um, which was meant that they were more tied to the land. They couldn't leave. Um, they, they had to ask their word permission to do things like get married. Um, and we're going to see that during the Renaissance, this feudal system breaks down. We actually discussed the impact the Great Plague played in that, that all of a sudden there were a lot more jobs in the cities because so many people had died. Um, that peasants started escaping from their land, that the serfs, they would break their feudal ties. Um, remember that they had to work their lord's land too. They had to work the farms, but what they got in return was just scrappings of food that they could use to eat their food and of course a place to, to put their house. Um, now they're, they're moving, they're just leaving and they're going to the cities and they're getting a job in, in some of the openings. Um, and then some more and more of the lords start to um, free the peasants from their bondage to the land. They, they say, okay, you're no longer tied to the land. Now you can still live here and work my farm, but um, you, you're free to leave if you would like. Well, before that, they, they just weren't. They would have to kind of escape. It was similar to slavery. I, I don't like to um, use that, but that, that phrase, but it, it's true. Um, so now we are in the Renaissance, okay? And, and in the towns, the rich towns. If you were a peasant living in the countryside, if you didn't live in a big city, you probably didn't feel the Renaissance. You probably didn't even know that the Renaissance was happening. But in the towns, we start to see a, a change in the societal structure. Okay, the kings no longer have any power in these towns. Um, we start to see that a, a new upper middle class starts to develop. So we still have these like lords, um, the patricians, as they're called, at that point, um, the upper class. These are moneyed people who had had money forever. The Medici family, right? These kind of people. Um, but all of a sudden, there comes this this new upper middle class that is going to one day be called the bourgeoisie. These are the business owners. These are the 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 rich business owners who start to get power in society. Um, we also have a, a, a middle middle class developing in the cities, and these people are, are skilled laborers, okay? We're talking about people like blacksmiths. And by the way, if your name is English and your last name is Smith, your family may have been a blacksmith, probably was. Um, and blacksmiths work with metal, so there would be someone in the city whose job it was to work with metal and, and make swords and whatever out of metal. This is a skilled labor job. And these are high paying jobs. You can have a house in the city. You can live an upper class, upper middle class life with one of these jobs. Tailors are people who make clothing. If your last name is Taylor and you are of English descent, your family was probably tailors. They're probably people who, who made clothing in, in, in uh, the cities. Millers were, were cotton workers. We start to find these kind of middle-class jobs developing in cities and people coming in and taking these jobs and, and living middle-class lives. So no longer do we have a super, super rich and everyone else is poor, kind of like slaves, except for the lords and the king himself or her himself. Um, but now we have a developing middle class, which is incredibly important to understand because our country is 60% ish middle class and it's the middle class that makes us strong it's not the super rich there's always been the super rich and we are somewhere in the range of i don't know 30 percent i believe is it 20 something percent of living below the poverty line um, but it's the middle class it's people who have and, and here's how you know if you're middle class okay if you have extra money to buy things right low Low socioeconomic people spend all of their money on stuff they need. Rent, food, clothing. Shelter, food, and, and clothes. Um, but if you have extra money for that video game or that phone or that whatever, right, then you're, you're part of the middle class. 
I mean, it's, it's the ability of the middle class to buy stuff, which allows for all of these businesses that exist in our world today to even exist, to sell stuff to people, or else the only businesses out there would be grocery stores, right? And um, grocery stores and clothing stores, but it wouldn't be brand name clothing stores, right? Because brand names are middle class. If, you're, if your clothes are from anywhere other than, you know, the very low, low price clothing stores, then, then that's a middle class purchase. Um, if you can eat out and, you, and you're not just eating, you know, the basics um, that your parents can cook or, or that they get, then that's middle class living, right? And that's, that's our society. Um, so in this period, in the cities, we start to see the beginning of a middle class. Um, all right, marriages. The marriages back then were arranged, all right? If you were gonna get married, your parents would choose who you were gonna marry. It's funny, I, I brought this up once to my daughters and they, and they both started yelling at me and my youngest started hitting me. <laughs> She's a crazy person, but, because um, no one wants, your parents to choose how she comes. No one wants your parents to choose who you marry. I didn't marry the person that my my family thought would be best for me, or maybe who strengthened my family's business yeah, ties just, or anything like. Yeah, he just got out of his family's way, and he just married the woman who he wants. I just married the woman that I loved, right? I married for love, but back then people married for business relations, for connections, and, and interestingly, the the family of the woman would have to give money to the man in, in a form of a dowry so he could afford them. It was, it's, it's almost like women were property back then. Um, and then the children would kind of bond families together. Okay, so um, this didn't just happen in the upper class. This also was a very middle class thing as well. Um, I want my business want to be tied up with a blacksmith's business over there. Would you like to marry my daughter? I'll give you my daughter. How do you give someone your daughter? Well, that, that was very common back then. And there are still places in the world today where marriages are arranged. Um, we know that um, women didn't have equal rights, but in Renaissance Italy, in the house, women ran the house. Um, oftentimes men were, were at work. Sometimes they were off trading. I mean, if you were a trader back then, if you were a salesman, which my dad was when I was growing up, um, he's retired, um, you wouldn't live at home. You would be traveling, right? And you'd come home, you'd bring money. So, the, so women did have a certain level of autonomy, a certain level of freedom in their homes where they were the boss of the household, um, especially when dad was away. Um, and of course, a father had absolute power of everyone living under his roof if he was home, um, including his children and his wife. All right, and that's where we're going to end today.